वेलकम टू एपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मृन्मय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कम्पेटिव इंडियन लैंगुएज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा टुडे वील डिस्कस अबाउट मिर्जा गालिब एंड हिज पोएटिक थॉट हिज कंट्रीब्यूशन टू इंडियन पोएटिक्स मिर्जा गालिब वॉज बॉर्न इन सेवनटीन नाइन्टी सेवन एंड वॉज डायड इन एटीन सिक्सटी नाइन He is one of the most loving poets in Indian literature and widely translated in most of all the major Indian languages. His heavenly talent was expressed in his construction of beauty in poetry. He is uh, received in Indian literature and also he is talked as a poet of world literature as kalidasa and tagore is received by other languages in india and abroad he was the post the poet of fall of mughal empire he saw his city delhi was declining in 1857 galib has influenced in numerous number of poets in india and outside through his poetry and poetic thoughts which were expressed mainly in his letters <clears throat> the poetic thought or poetics what we would like to call is mainly expressed through his letters and this poetics is significant in indian poetic thought as it added excellence in the tradition of high thought on poetics which was started with the sanskrit rhetoricians these letters one side reflect galib's thought on poetry and the other side this vividly describe the socio political and cultural reality of his time through which his poetry took birth his attitude as an excellent critic and reader of poetry also has been expressed through such writings he believed that poetry is a way of life and poetry is ultimate freedom for human being Ganesh Devi would like to see Galib as a proponent of the concept of poetry as a medium of freedom in his Indian literary criticism theory and interpretation Ganesh Devi elaborated this claim with the selective pieces from Galib's letters Uh, galib was great fan of firdausi hasan basri he was great fan of sadi and hafiz and also he has deep attraction towards the myth of laila majnu in the time when mughal empire was declining he saw his love delhi getting destroyed he felt that a man needs a little happiness he said in a letter to live one's life one requires just a little happiness philosophy empires poetry are all nonsense i unquote and there is no doubt he at the end of the day found his happiness in his poetry and the poetry of his ancestors uh, bajamil siddiqui comments asadullah khan galib alias mirza nawasa is the best known and the most widely read indo persian poet of his time his many well known ghazals have been sung and recorded by numerous performers in india as well as in pakistan 
since urdu poetry relies heavily on oral tradition and rhythmic recitation catch phrases from various urdu poets have uh, made their way into everyday urdu speech in a way which is unparalleled in any other language this is particularly true with regard to galib's poetry where his use of urdu language drawing heavily on its classical persian parent tradition is almost unmatched by any other urdu poet i unquote now in a um, note in a module on ghazal and galib rakesh kumar said be it persian or urdu most of galib's verses were written in the form of ghazal which was the most popular of the traditional genres of verse writing in persian and in urdu the ghazal consist of a series of couplets each one of them encapsulate the entire theme sometimes however the theme continues in other couplets as witnessed in a few ghazals of galib but typically every couplet of the ghazal is an independent self contained entity thus leaving enough scope for the changing mood of the poet one of the distinguishing feature of urdu verse is that they are not written but said and the poet who says it presents to his audience generally in a mushaira by reciting it to them and it is only later that they appear in print um in in this uh, characteristics of ghazal uh, we can understand that ghazal is uh, self contained uh, generally a couplet uh, or few couplets in ghazal they express a particular theme and it depends on the mood of the poet so it actually opens a possibility of multiple interpretation of a single text of ghazal when a performer is supposed to perform a ghazal whether in musical form or in recitation form in mushaira that performer will have authority to interpret and reinterpret the meaning of ghazal that performer can change the the mood of ghazal so ghazal uh, by default from its its very origin it has an open ending and um, enough possibility of interpretation and ghazals are created uh, extemporary really sometime uh, in in the mushaira and that is why there is uh, immense importance of oral tradition i mean ghazal mainly exist in oral tradition that is why oral tradition is very much significant in urdu and persian um, uh, poetic tradition in 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 verse creation oral tradition in significant for example galib even didn't keep uh, his ghazals with him he uh, took uh, his own creation from his friends and other fans of his poetry because most of his ghazals um, were existed in 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 the form of orality uh, the range of themes in ghazal is quite vast and any thought which can be encapsulated in a simple couplet can be included in its theme however the theme of love dominates the ghazal urdu poetry from the last quarter of the 7th century onwards consists mostly of poems about love and not love poems as it was free from the demands on of, of uh, realism so the 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 concept of love theme of love what is expressed in ghazals or other verses of urdu poetry in 17th century the theme is love but this cannot be called as love poems according to rakesh kumar because there is no particular desire 
which is meant for some particular person or thing which exists in uh, reality. Something is metaphysical, exists in, in, the, in this concept of love, in these verses or couplets of ghazals. Ghalib's poetry is a fine illustration of this thought of such kind of creation of love as a theme. In verse writing, the genius of a poet lies in his range of thought and the style of presentation. Ghalib excelled his predecessors as well as contemporaries in both these aspects. For Ghalib, Ghazal was not just an exercise in conventional themes, but the expression of thought and feelings which accorded with his own. Although all the traditional themes of Ghazal found a place in his verses, including that of passionate, all-consuming love of a man for his mistresses, Ghalib brought about innovations in the presentation of the stock character of the gazelle, especially with respect to such themes as love and religion, Rakesh Kumar commented. A keen, unsentimental, detached observation of man, God and the universe is one of the characteristics of gazelle. The second characteristic we can find from the study of gazelle is a strong sense of independence and self-respect. A strong passion for originality in what uh, he has to say. An ability to enjoy to the last drop everything that the life brings. And a dry, irrepressible and unbashed humor which he is capable of bringing to the treatment of any theme including those on which he feels with the greatest seriousness and intensity. So all these characteristics we, we can find in, in, in the reading of Galib's Ghazal. Galib wrote on diverse themes. The theme of love was dominant among those themes and which he brought out in the form of uh, his Ghazals. Another important distinguishing feature of Galib's poetry is the unorthodox manner in which he portrays love and its characters and this unorthodox manner of writing poetry or writing literature we can find in the writing of so many Urdu and Persian authors, poets and writers of medieval India and Firdausi is one among those. The depiction of earthly love in Urdu Ghazal of Ghalib and other contemporary poets has to be seen in the context of its legitimacy in the medieval Indian society. Another important dimension of love depicted in the Urdu Ghazals, including that of Ghalib, is the mystic love, which is often blended with the earthly love, the passionate, illicit love between Two human beings is used as symbols of the similar love of the mystic lover for his God, his divine beloved. I quote another couplet from uh, this, this thought, this thinking. Though I have passed my life in pledge to all the ages cruelties, yet never was the thought of you once absent from my mind. The one of the most important characteristics of Galib's Ghazal, Galib's poetry, is his understanding of lover, which is godless, godless lover. This is one kind of interpretation of Galib's um, love theme in Ghazals. And some other kind of interpretation also is there and we will put that later. Uh, Baizamila Siddiqui begins his article on Galib named Mirza Galib, the godless lover, with a poem by Galib. The poem is, I quote, When there was nothing, there was God. If nothing had been, God would have been. My very being has been my downfall. If I had not been, 
what would it have mattered? From this couplet, we can understand that the very existence of human being is significant than the existence of God. The existence of God actually depends on the existence of human being. And such kind of thought was not unique to Ghalib only. Because the Sufi poets, the Bhakti poets, the most of the poets, the people's poets um, and the saint poets of medieval India, many of them have reflected such kind of ideas in their poems. We can find it in Chandidash, the same concept that the, the existence of God actually depends on the existence of human being. Ghalib's attitude of philosophical doubt rooted in his own experience and it was mistaken by superficial readers of atheism. In so far as God is about love, it could be argued that Ghalib was closer to the truth in terms of the real nature of the relationship between the creator and the created. Ghalib states this boldly in terms of philosophical truth. Had nothing been, then the following would have been the case. 1. It would not have mattered as there would have been no distinction between being and non-being. It is only the act of creation that has brought about the duality of a creator and created. The creator would still have been. Third, the creator would have existed within the creator. Man would have lived in God. Man would have been God. And this, this thought, these characteristics of the existence of concept of God in Ghalib's poetry can, can, can uh, be found in, in, in the study, in the reflection of his couplet, of which I am going to quote. In the time before twilight and darkness, before anything my beloved existed, and if nothing ever came into being in the eternal arena of creation and non-creation, the source would have been there alone. As for me, pay me no mind. I deserve no mention in the divine scheme. Thus, who am I to lay any claim for even as I am part of this creation? I am already drowned in the ocean of love. Translated by Abid Muhyuddin based on a couplet of Kali. Um, Galit then goes a step further and states that the creator is helpless and unable to interfere in the affairs of the world or indeed his own laws. So God is helpless to, to control, to handle his own creation. And here lies the significance of human being in this universe. Life's leisure is a mirror of the hundred hues of self-adoration and night and day the great dismay of the onlooker of this sin. I unquote. In Ghalib's poetry, love can only ever be true if it is unconditional. The conditional love cannot be true or cannot lead a man to achieve the truth the ultimate truth. And such kind of thought we also can find in the Vaishnavite philosophy. The love which is mentioned as unconditional by Ghalib is mentioned also as unconditional in Vaishnavite philosophy. And Vaishnavite philosophy says that Ahaituki Prem. It means there is no hetu, no reason, no condition behind the love happens. If you lose, if you lose your heart to someone, then it is also necessary to lose your voice so that you lose the ability to complain 
about non reciprocal love when you are loving someone there should not be any expectation in this real world and that is and that love can make you reach towards the truth the same kind of understanding conception we can find in lord chaitanya chaitanya mahaprabhu's love towards lord krishna i uh, quote from galiv all my lamentations had sprung from the depths of my aching heart but since i had given it away as an offering to my beloved thus the very source of my pleadings had been removed from my chest so what could he the purpose of the tongue remaining between my cheeks since i will be unable to express let my passion be silenced within me love is also about having faith in the beloved irrespective of whether he himself is faithful um in a couplet he says that couplet is translated by abid mohiuddin in this state of complete isolation while away from home in enforced seclusion there is no need to stir up my sins for i can only bear my beloved whispering and anxiously await my love's good tiding i trust we will soon be overcoming any hardship even a stroke of lightning could not erase the place of our nesting this love was an unconditional longing that could not simply be ruined by anything for galib in a typical sufi fashion love creates a condition in which life and death become indistinguishable when you live for love you die and only when you die you really live so there is a circle relation in living loving and dying love knows no difference between life and death i live only when i see that infidel for whom i am dying i quote galib lived through an age characterized by the ending of an old order and the emergence of a new one symbolically he became a bridge between the two as a person he remained awfully misunderstood but as a poet he proved he was ahead of his time his poetic sentiments have stood the test of time in so far as the human condition remains ridden with uncertainty about the future yet hazy about the past and in galib's own words who lives long enough to tell the tale i unquote from this expert comment on galib's time and the and the a uh, reason of emergence of such kind of philosophical thought in galib's ghazal we can see that the galib was a bridge between the diminishing old order declining old order and the emergence of new order galib was the connecting poet the galib was the connecting philosopher of this two times and two entirely different thoughts i quote from galib's couplet a compelling style of poetry was all i had in life it was appreciated by none so i just wrote my verse and put it away if that is how my life is spent then oh galib how will i say or even remember that i too had once possessed god galib never waited for any rasik or the person who will acknowledge accompany the test of his poetry he was 
very much indifferent about the pieces what he has created. I mentioned earlier that sometimes he took the ghazals what he created earlier from his friends or the or the his readers and he believed he was not bothered that who is reading his poetry and who is not and he believed whatever creation he did and the whatever philosophical thought he has expressed in his ghazals was actually not accompanied by any competent reader and that is why he said a compelling style of poetry was all I had in life. It was appreciated by none. So I just wrote my verse and put it away. And he, it, it, this, this, this very, very uh, comment of Ghalib which is expressed in this ghazal shows that how much he was careful about making the style of his ghazal, of his poetry. And how this style of poetry became style of living, style of his own life. And this is how Ghalib proves that poetry is actually way of life. And he took enough freedom to uh, make it a medium of freedom. Then we can uh, talk about the religion, issues of religion in Ghalib's poetry. I again quote from Rakesh Kumar. Rakesh Kumar talks that Ghalib's attitude on religion was akin to those of the Sufi mystic lover of God. And not only that, we can um, compare Ghalib's philosophical understanding standing, which is reflected in his poetry is very much similar with the Vaishnavite philosophy and the Gaudiya Vaishnavite philosophy. And I took few examples from uh, that, that philosophy also to compare Ghalib's philosophy. Ghalib's lived his life by principles radically different from those of the orthodox personified in the ghazals as sheikh, an elder or a religious leader. He rejects with contempt their doctrine of prescribed conduct of life motivated by hope of reward and fear of punishment in the life to come. Thus Ghalib writes, Abstinence wins no praise from me, what thought be it sincere? Behind it lies raw greed to win a reward for virtuous deeds. I unquote. Now we can talk about letters written by Ghalib to, to the, the, the intellectuals, the friends, the scholars and other poets. And these letters are very fine example of style of writing letters in Urdu language. And, and, and we can understand that Ghalib is one of that talent who have developed the prose style in Urdu language. So, through these letters, we can get the ideas about poetic thoughts uh, of Ghalib through this, uh, through this uh, reading of these letters. He once wrote to a friend, I have invented a new style through which correspondence has become conversation. From a distance of a thousand miles, you can speak through your pen and enjoy company despite separation. Such kind of philosophical and poetic confidence Ghalib had gathered from his life, from his experience and from his poetry. He was, uh, the, the, the very famous books of his letters are compilation like namely Urdu e Hind and Urdu e Muallah. And from those uh, collection of letters, we can find Ghalib's idea about poetry. Ghalib is often claimed as very modern poet because the modern st style in Indian poetry, which developed later during the colonial period, actually um, already found in different uh, mode 
in Galib. I quote, The ongoing debate on postmodernism made us realize that truth is not an absolute concept. It is what we construct through language to fulfill our cultural needs. Similarly, the world in which we live in its essentially incongruous where everything is shaped by its otherness. Hence, it is unreal and indicates banality and voidness. Curiously, it is something that was realized almost more than two centuries ago by the most in focus Urdu poet Mirza Ghalib. I unquote. Gopichand Narang has very famous um, critical writing on Ghalib's poetry and that uh, book is called Ghalib's Thought, Dialectical Poetics and the Indian Mind. Ghalib was not limited within the sphere of Urdu poetry and Persian poetry, but the essence, what he hold through his poetic practice is very much Indian. He reflected Indian mind in his poetry. And because of that, the, the, the contribution of Badauni, the contribution of Ghalib in Indian poetics is immense because they are the pillars, they are the, 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 the link between the, the ancient poetic thought and the modern poetic thought. Because the, the poetic thought in India, in Sanskrit, was developed in ancient period and the, and, the, and the beginning of the medieval history of Indian literature. And after that, the Sanskrit poetic thought was uh, declined. Uh, later in medieval, medieval period, we cannot find much contribution of it in Indian poetics. But it is... Al-Badawni, it is Ghalib and other Urdu Persian poet who had contributed a lot in, in Indian poetic thought. Gopichand Narak, uh, the Narang's book has been reviewed by Shafi Kidwai in uh, The Hindu and I would like to quote from uh, that. For him, faith denotes an unending puzzle whether it heals or festers, the poet is not sure points out eminent theorist Gopi Chand Naran, and I quote it from Shafi Kidwai. In his finely etched and well-researched study of Ghalib, titled Ghalib's Thought, Dialectical Poetics, and the Indian Mind, recently released by Sahitya Academy. So, Ghalib's poetry is understood as dialectical poetics, the subject of dialectical poetics, and dialectical poetics as the, the concept is found in Ghalib's practice of poetry and and this is uh, claimed by the famous critic and scholar Gopichand Narang. Kidway further says, Narang marshals unflinching evidence to assert that Ghalib's much talked about poetry hardly webs a pathos filled sensitive narrative around overwhelming sense of loss, unreciprocated love, human uh, uh, frailties and despair but it creatively concentrates on human psyche that causes dreams and desires uh, essentially express itself in ways beyond rationalizing his verses simultaneously mirror the paradoxical shadow lines of truth and existence and reveal what ideologies conceal the book offers a nuanced, refreshing perspective on reading Ghalib and it is an invaluable gift for those who want to understand the intellectual and cultural milieu of India not told by the colonial historians. And I believe that this is very, very um, elaborated and a very deep study about Ghalib and his contribution to Indian literature, Indian poetry, and Indian poetics. For further reading and to get all the references on the uh, quotation what I mentioned here and to get the further study about this content uh, in this module, you can uh, consult the e-content provided here. Thank you.